here today again with uh, with John McInnes, and um, we are going to be talking about a new contest that John has launched. Um, I'm just going to be telling us a little bit more about it. Um, so, John, it's great to have you on the show as ever. Tell us what this is about. It sounds really exciting. Well, thank you, Tracy, for inviting me back. It's always good to talk to you. Um, so, I'm launching the the real time movie challenge mood scene is basically another challenge as you know i did the real-time shorts challenge back in 2022 and when uh, the lockdown first happened and that was a roaring success uh produced 30 short films in 30 days um from assets that uh, we provided for for participants to sort of build a short film from and i've launched this new challenge um well, one, because uh, we're making a full feature film in Unreal 5. Um, and uh, as you know, I kind of want to explore, discover new ways of, of making stuff. Um, and so, you know, harnessing the community, uh, involving the community, um, I think is, is a really fun thing to do that helps the community. And it also helps us make our, our bigger movie. So the first challenge that we're doing and related to making that movie is uh called mood scene and um i always thought that there's all these challenges you know since since we did my challenge two years ago there been so many challenges you know the unreal fellowships have been a roaring yeah. success and they've produced so many of these great little short films um but i always sort of thought well people put all these work into it and it doesn't necessarily go anywhere. I mean, it's like maybe they're real or it shows as a piece of work that they did and they might win a prize or something, but it doesn't sort of cohere into anything more than that. And it always struck me like, wow, there's, there's like, you know, if you had like 70 short films, if you strung them all together, you could make a whole feature film out of that. And I thought, well, what if everybody, you know, were, were, was building their brick into this, this much bigger endeavor? Um, wouldn't that be more interesting and significant and potentially, you know, monetizable and rewardable for the people who made it? Because if you make a short film, there's there's no money in short films, as we all know, but there's money in larger product. I mean, there's 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 the desire for more content than ever at the moment. And, uh, you know, that was our desire to make a feature film. So I thought, well, let's launch a challenge to see what we could get, how we could get the community involved in, in making that that bigger movie and reward everybody for um, diving in and making making a, a mood scene, what we're calling a mood scene. It's a really different concept, I think. It sounds, it does sound really interesting. I really like the way that you're talking about it there. You've called it a meta movie. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, a meta movie is just a, a, another fancy buzzword. Um, everything's meta these days, right? Absolutely, um, well, um, unless you, you know, are meta. Anna, as, as, as you know, we, you know, we, we've all been building the metaverse for years. This is what we're sort of, you know, involved with. And, you know, the idea is basically at the core of what I've been trying to do for a, quite a while is to, is to make a traditional movie. But if you make it within a game engine, which is, a, you know, a 3D interactive rendering tool, then that can be a meta movie. Well, what is a meta movie? A meta movie is more than a movie or beyond a movie so that, you know, you can render this out as a 2D linear narrative story but because it's made within a 3d interactive game engine it can be so much more so um what that is is really up to the creators uh, it's up to the audience uh depending on your story your ip so for example you know if you made a marvel movie and if it was all made within unreal 5 well what if then you could then, you know, use those same assets to that you made the movie for to make a video game or a VR experience or whatever. And, you know, really, you know, um, I mean, they wouldn't be exactly the same assets because, of course, you know, interoperability is is an interesting dilemma, um, but it would essentially be the same same assets, you know, and if you were making a movie or a project um, using assets, what then could you do from that? Now, obviously, not every movie or story is, uh, you know, aligns itself with then becoming a game or becoming a, a VR experience or some other entity. But there are a lot of um, IPs, a lot of stories that can be expanded upon into different forms and formats that audiences may like and enjoy. So that's the idea of it, it, it in, in a nutshell, I guess. Yeah. But what you're trying to do is create an, a narrative film from the content that folks submit. Yeah, it's, it, you know, 
it's it's I I, I don't want to you know reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, I, I think you know VR was sort of in a way lumbered by that. It's like oh, it's a new form, yeah. um, which people are very excited about. I'm very excited about, but there's uh, there's high friction in terms of getting audiences participating in that. Um, so you know, making a meta movie, it, it, it's really you know we're making a movie that can be more than a movie. So. Um, um, you know, it's like if you start, you know, you, you could equally make a video game that could then be a movie, you know, it's, it, you, could, you can basically tackle the meta equation from any one of these established content forms. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the fact of the matter is using a game engine, it can just, you know, transmute into something more or something other, uh, depending on what the story or the property is. Yeah, it seems like there's lots of folks coming at this from all different angles at the moment, I think. Well, um, that's right. And I, th and I think that's great. You know, I mean, it's interesting that we, we've had a history of, you know, uh, movies being made from uh, video games, you know, every, you know, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, all, all you know, every successful video game has been tried to sort of be put into a movie. And I think, you know, they're making a Fortnite movie for exactly the same reason. But it would be interesting to see, you know, what the Fortnite movie is because uh, one presumes it's all going to be made in Unreal as well. So you're taking Unreal assets directly into making a movie out of that, which is what we're doing as well and what, uh, you know, other folks are doing. Whereas traditionally you had like the video game over here and they were just basically trying to grab that kind of video game audience by making a traditional live action Hollywood movie. Uh, sometimes it was successful, sometimes not successful, but at that point they're completely different um and entertainment products almost um using very very different pipelines and workflows and methodologies to to create both of those so, uh, so whereas what we're trying to do is cohere it all into one area you know taking narrative as, as one one uh um spoke of this wheel um and sort of leading with that i guess and then exploring you know making that the sort of starting point of what a story can be i see so what you're going to end up with then is actually uh, a game-like experience that you uh, um, uh, interact with on your computer. You're not going to see this in a cinema. Yeah, no, you're going to see it in cinema. So, so you know, you could start with a fully rendered, you know, linear movie and see that in the cinema. But then we might we might well have a a uh, an experience uh, that is launched at the same time as that, or as a consequence of that, that would then be something more than that. I think I think one of the you know the most interesting and attractive things about where we're at at the cutting edge of anything is you don't quite know where it's going to go. Um, sure. You just have a, a sort of potentiality that is within the technology uh, and within audiences. And what we want to do is really tap into that potentiality uh, to see where it goes. So we don't know. So we're going to start with a movie and then, you know, hopefully the movie can be a success in its own terms, you know, whether, whether it does anything else, you know, that would be, that would be phenomenal. Uh, but then if it's a success, it's like, well, okay, well, this also can exist in some other form. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what, um, you know, the, the uh, Epic of um, uh, released the Un Unreal Editor in Fortnite. And uh, there's all sorts of possibilities. I know that they're spearheading and opening up through Fortnite as a platform so it'd be kind of interesting how you know companies like epic kind of develop their platform and what types of content are then available to audiences uh, mm -hmm. through that platform and this could well be you know the start of, of where we then go after making a movie with this yeah i mean it's i think really it's what keeps it's what keeps people interested in in the content beyond the format that they first access it in, yeah. and, and then how how do you kind of make that compelling other in other forms? I think that would yeah. be really interesting to see how that observes. It sounds like a really interesting experiment, actually. Well, it's the thing. So, you know, I've specifically written this, as you know, my background is as a screenwriter, but a background, you know, in screenwriter that wrote Call of Duty. So I have a sort of a foot in each camp. Yes. So when I conceived of this uh, story, this movie, I thought, well, this needs to work as a movie. If it was only a movie, it needs to work in that. And it also needs to be able to work uh with uh some sort of, i hate the word gamification <laughs> but yeah. it needs to work as a game in its own it, it, it could work as a game in its own right or has the potential to do that and that's what i've designed um 
you won't know just you know you'll you'll find out in, in, soon enough uh, what the what the movie is but um the game elements will you know once you see that you'll understand uh how that would lend itself to being a, a, a video game so sure. um you know yeah in, yeah fascinating and why mood scenes what is it you're looking for in moods specifically well a mood you know it's it's interesting so you know out of all these challenges and the challenge that I mounted, you know, is a real time shorts challenge. It's actually extremely hard, I think, to make a successful short film um, that has a real story with characters, camera, like there are so many elements that have to kind of work in order for it to be a really successful short film. And there are lots and lots of short films, but there, there are very few short films that are actually really good that really tick every single, every single box. So I think it's, it's a really high bar to hit. Um, and I think there's a lot of fun to be had doing something that's a little more approachable, that's a little more tightly framed in terms of, you know, what the goals are in this. But also I have a, you know, well, A, you know, we want to use this mood scene challenge to sort of lay out our movie effectively. So there's six moods within this challenge. Now, each one of those moods um, relates to a scene um, in, in my movie. So you could see that as the sort of, these are the Lego bricks of, of the movie of, you know, there's six key environments within that movie. So I'm sort of using this to sort of lay out what that could look like. I'm looking for people to come up with cool ideas that we could then maybe put into that movie as well. Um, it's, it's a sort of scratch board, a, a sort of, you know, sandbox, a play box for everybody to come and play in. And then we're almost like, well, then see how, what will come of it. But why it's a mood scene is um, I think we've sort of gotten away sometimes as this emphasis on, on as a huge emphasis on digital human avatars and digital human avatar performance and the uncanny valley and whether this is plausible, does this work? Uh, it's almost like this obsession that I think almost detracts from what people should be more focused on, which was basically doing something, making something compelling. And I thought, well, if you take out the human avatar component and performance component, you still have this amazing environment and scene that um, what we used to call mise-en-scene in, in movie making, which is basically sort of telling a story or using the elements um, available to the filmmakers to tell the story that are um, generally outside the, the, the human performance, you know, scenery, lighting, props, camera work, you know, music, sound, all of that sort of stuff. Um, there's so much you can do with all of that, and especially in, in a game engine, because that's what game engines are really good at. Uh, you know, environments can look amazing in in uh, in, uh, in a game engine. I always sort of, I always smile when I see like a, a sort of metahuman short that's just two metahumans talking to each other, and it's like shot reverse shot, you know, back and forth. And I'm like, well, the the, the best uh, you know UE shorts tend to really incorporate their environment and tell the story through environment as well as characters that might be in that 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 scene and uh because i said there's amazing assets out there that you know we can create amazing fantastical environments very very richly textured and uh they can look really good so there's so much you can already do that if it's a live action thing you'd have to build that you'd have to build that set you have to get an art director you'd have to build all those stuff it costs a huge amount of money huge amount of time and then it would all just be struck at the end of the shoot and sort of burned probably but this, um, you know, said so we build an environment, we can use it for all sorts of things. It's, it's recyclable in, in many ways. And as I say, uh, you know, I think as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, um, it's a really, really, really good exercise to tell the story of, or ca capture of mood um, that is suggested from the environment, the assets that we've given, and the sort of um, the written prompt. So it's basically like give a sort of written prompt mm -hmm. um, in the scene that sort of says, gives a tone to the to the to that scene and the skill the challenge is to actually reproduce a tone or a feeling and effect in the audience so that that is looking at this stuff to capture that that mood and i think there's uh there's something really challenging and i think there's something really valuable in that as an exercise in itself and all six of those um uh scenes that you've got there seem to me to have something in common which is there's something terrible it's kind of happened there you know there's blood on the carpet or um yeah. you know there's, there's something that you kind of allude to that you think oh no this is going to be very creepy 
And not only that, all of the scenes seem to represent different periods in time, which kind of suggests you're creating this mysterious time traveling, maybe paranormal type story. Is that is that maybe? That? <laughs> <laughs> um, Lovely. Yeah, I mean that that that's that's exactly you know what you know a. Of course, I, 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 that's exactly what I want people to do: is to take those assets, take the the written prompt, um, and interpret it. You know, um, I know exactly what, how I'm using those scenes. You know, I know what my script is. You know, you, you know, you guys don't, but I really want to see what people come up with and how they interpret that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you've interpreted it a certain way, which is, which is, which you know, mm, uh, maybe, could, yeah, okay, fair could, enough. <laughs> could, 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 could be right, could not be right, maybe. but um, you know, as part of that, you know, I kind of want to keep the, the movie under wraps, um, exactly what it is. Uh, it's a bit of a mystery box, you know. Uh, time will reveal all, um, but um, but yeah, I think that that's right. You know, the, the the assets, the environments should suggest something, and maybe that's something that participants can then build upon in this challenge. As my son walking around in his pajamas. <laughs> um, so, um, um, so, so yeah, that's exactly what I want want them to to do, um, and you know, really put their imagination into this. You know, that's what I want to see. I'd love to see that. So, yeah. And and these scenes are scenes that you are including in the movie. So you've already put a lot of effort into creating these scenes. Yeah. Well, it's if it's almost like I'm looking using this as a scratch board to see what how we could put this together okay. um scenes so we have prizes for um you know we have prizes from our sponsors we've got a whole bunch of sponsors on, on board with this that uh uh have uh you know uh graciously given us a bunch of um prizes uh so this is like cash software hardware all sorts of stuff um, so people can can win those. And then if we actually use one of the scenes, in, you know, all the, their work in the movie, then we'll give uh, people a, a fee for, for you know, using their, their work in the movie or work with them. Even we might even employ them because we like their work and we think, okay, can you now build this for it? So, so as I said, it's, a, it's an ongoing sort of um, thing that we want to sort of really reach out to the community and, and sort of weaponize um, their skill and talent and reward that skill and talent as well. Weaponizer, that's an interesting term. Crowdsourcing, really. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, now, you also mentioned something about soundscape and that the artists, um, as they submit, can also include soundscape in this. Um, tell us a little bit more about what you're expecting on soundscape. Um, sound, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, sound is obviously part of it. Um, people can employ sound, um, for their scenes. I think it's very interesting. Um, there might be audio cues that come from assets that we give people. There might not. Um, but I don't want to sort of make that the sort of high bar, which people then hang themselves on because, you know, they can't achieve that, or they think it's about like, you know, um, uh, creating an audio design, um, mm -hmm. to, to make this work. Um, as I said, sometimes the simplest uh, idea is 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 the most effective one. You know, maybe this is it's completely silent. Maybe they just capture this feeling, this scene in complete silence, or maybe there's just a tone running underneath it. You know, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I want to leave it completely open um, to people's interpretation. Or if you're a really good sound designer and want to kind of sound design this whole thing and make your own audio cues within that go to town i'd love to see that i mean you know it, it'll be really fascinating to see what people actually can do with it i would love to see whatever people people bring to it. it's, it's basically bring your imagination you know bring your skills but bring your imagination to it and uh, you're not going to be necessarily rewarded or penalized either way it's just purely based on on what we see and how we kind of feel about that and and your ability to yeah. film and capture it in 90 yeah. seconds yeah, or less, you know, it's, uh, you know, you could make a 10 second scene, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you feel is effective in terms of communicating what you feel that mood is. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of your judges, uh, we reviewed one of the films that um, Jay Selina did a couple of uh, weeks yeah. ago. Where, where, where Yeah, Jay's going to be one of the judges actually on this. So. Yes, I saw that. Um, but his film where... Um, you know, this person was walking in this really dark corridor where there's a velociraptor in the, yeah, you know, in the depths of it, and just yeah. 
I mean, I'm incredibly short, but wow, what a power thing. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's a really good example. Um, and that's why I asked Jay to be a judge. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. So tell no, us a little fantastic. bit more about the judges, because I see you've got some really interesting folks on this contest as well. Well, I think these are a lot of people that I that I know that I've met in you know my uh, networking in the community. A lot of people that I really really respect. Um, a lot of people that I think have got really interesting voices within this space, and all of them are sort of committed to real time storytelling. Um, and they come from a very very diverse field. Some of them are sort of industry you know CG industry pros. Some of them are. There's a couple of of um, um, people who uh, either won or were contestants or finalists on the Real Time Shorts Challenge. Um, they're really interesting voices and they're, you know, the cutting edge of the storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, you know, you're like Randall Kleiser, who's an old friend of mine who, who directed Greece and the Blue Lagoon back in, in the 1970s and, and early 80s. And he's, he's a really interesting guy because he's also been at the forefront of technology throughout his career you know he's known for these movies that he made in in his in his younger part of his career but he's really very much you know connected to the cutting edge uh and regarding you know technology of storytelling so i try to bring in a real mix of different people and there's other people like you know jay selena you know jonathan wimbrush um mm -hmm. they sort of who have been really you know uh, you know, dominating the sort of YouTuber kind of, um, you know, UE5 kind of world and promoting that. Um, so everybody comes at it with a certain skill set, a certain experience, um, and a certain way of looking at it, but they're all committed to the same sort of, you know, goals. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see what, what they think of the mood, mood scenes as well. And are these folks also part of your uh, movie making team? Um, they're not. Um, as I said, I'm, you know, my movie making team is pretty small. It's basically, you know, McKinnis Studios team at the moment. Um, we will be bringing on more people to be at different stages of production. Sure. Um, may use some of the, some of the people. It depends. Um, you know, it's, it's a, again, I really like involving the community and people, you know, can often, oh, I'm free this week. You know, maybe we could come in and do this or I could come and do some mocap or whatever. You know, I, I talk with these people, uh, all the time and um it's um it would love to be really great to involve them but um, at the moment it's sort of um unsure what that what that actually means but it's also great to know that that you know some of them are independent in in the sense of um you know the the, the judging and the prizes and all that sort of thing yeah no, absolutely now what's your timeline then once you've uh you know once the contest is run and and it runs from the first to the 30th of september yeah. Um, once you've registered so it's not you know you've not got long to work on this once you've signed up what's your timeline after that so um after that uh, so that'll be beginning of october um we're um you know going to look at what we've got so, again it, we, we've got a plan of what we want to do in terms of building this movie um we'll see what this challenge uh, produces um it can produce significant you know, uh, gains for the movie, it could produce small gains for the movie. We're not quite sure what they're, we're building that the, the movie has um, six or seven principal characters, which we're already in the process of building. So that's another sort of part of putting this movie together. So in the next couple of months, as I said, it'd be good to see what, what, what comes from the mood scene challenge. And then we'll be at a certain stage with our characters. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll do a sort of, you know, an avatar challenge or we'll do like a, a mocap challenge or oh, wow. some other some other challenge that um, can help push um, our production further along. Or we'll just fund that ourselves and do it if, if it, it isn't appropriate for a challenge. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what comes out of the woodwork. I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm very open to what happens next. And, you know, one of the great things about, you know, mounting challenges like this is that it brings people together. It gets people talking about what they're doing, about what they want to do, what they want to achieve. And often when that, I'm like, oh, that's great. Well, come and do that on my movie and I'll pay you to do that in this scene to do this. Um, so many, many kind of cool and interesting things can re result from this, uh, you know, in terms of the timeline, um, you know, it's the interesting thing, like one of the biggest hurdles and problems, I think, in traditional movie making is the you have to plan you know like production is like oh it's it's 26 days from this date to this date and everything has to happen within that and i think the beauty of working in a sort of in a way non-linear way as well 
um, in a way that doesn't have a deadline is that you can actually get a lot more done quicker, a lot more efficiently, um, rather than having to shove everything within a specific timeline. And then the costs go up, people have deadlines. Everybody who works in the visual effects industry will know exactly what this is about having to deliver on a deadline on something. Um, that is imposed because the movie's going to be released at X date and the whole marketing is there. Well, I want to take all that away and say, okay, let's just get down to the pure creativity. Um, what do we need to do in order to make this movie? Let's not worry too much about the release. And in a way, like we don't know what we're going to end up with. So this will be like an indie movie that we make. And if it's any good, we'll end up selling it, getting it released. Do, you know, we don't know where that will go. So there isn't a specific you know, release plan. We have you know, release ambitions. But, it's emergent, uh, is what you're saying. It's 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 emergent, but I think it's going to be pretty fantastic. Um, but I think having a specific deadline for ourselves is unnecessary and uh, and for this project counterproductive. That sounds really interesting. So I'm looking forward to when you come back on the show and you tell us more about <laughs> where this has got to uh, in in due course. Yeah, um, I think. At the moment, it sounds like it's a really fantastic opportunity for uh, creators to get involved with. Um, yep. And obviously wish you all the best with the, the next stage of it. And um, looking forward to catching up with you again right. in due course. Many thanks, right. John. Really appreciate you. Thanks, Tracy. It's been great talking with you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Uh, let me just stop this. Okay.